Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, where we're making a tour of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, right here in the live studios in Hythe, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel, otherwise called the Haven. We're <clears throat> hoping that you are all healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> that is, you're getting up early every morning and um, chanting Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavata Mihima Stotram equally applies to the Bhagavad Gita as it does to the Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> The Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are mentioned together many, many times in Shastra and especially in Srila Prabhupada's purports. One follows the other and they're both uh, the essence of the Vedas, the essence of all knowledge. By Srila Sanatan Goswami's grace, we'll hear tonight the Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotra, as we do every night. Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. <clears throat> Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwando Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya. Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvadasa Vasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin. Madguru man mahadana, man nistadaka mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin, atini chuchata kada. Hanamun chakadachen mam prem na ret kanta yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. <coughs> Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, <clears throat> Arjuna has uh, explained to Krishna uh, his hesitation and has now uh, refused to fight at the end of the first chapter. And now we come to the contents of the Gita summarized, the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where the actual uh, teachings uh, from Krishna to Arjuna begin. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, contents 
of the Gita summarized. Arjuna submits to Lord Krishna as his disciple and Krishna begins his teachings to Arjuna by explaining the fundamental distinction, distinction between the temporary material body and the eternal spiritual soul. The Lord explains the process of transmigration, the nature of selfless service to the Supreme and the characteristics of a self-realized person. Text 1 <clears throat> Sanjaya Uvacha Tang Tata Kripaya Vishtam Ashru Purna Kulekshanam Vishidan Tamiban Idam Bakyam Ubacha Madhusudanaha Sanjaya said, Seeing Arjuna full of compassion, his mind depressed, his eyes full of tears, Madhusudana Krishna spoke the following words. Purport Material compassion, lamentation and tears are all signs of ignorance of the real self. Compassion for the eternal soul is self-realization. The word Madhusudana is significant in this verse. Lord Krishna killed the demon Madhu and now Arjuna wanted Krishna to kill the demon of misunderstanding that, over, that had overtaken him in the discharge of his duty. No one knows where compassion should be applied. Compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless. Similarly, a man fallen in the ocean of nations cannot be saved simply by rescuing his outer dress, his material body. One who does not know this and laments for the outward dress is called a shudra, or one who laments unnecessarily. Arjuna was a chatriya, and this conduct was not expected from him. Lord Krishna, however, can dissipate the lamentation of the ignorant man, and for this purpose the Bhagavad Gita was sung by him. This chapter instructs us in self-realization by an analytical study of the material body and the spirit soul, as explained by the Supreme Authority, Lord Sri Krishna. This realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results and, it is, and is situated on, in the fixed conception of the real self. Chapter 2, I mean text 2, sorry. <clears throat> Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutas Twa Kashmalamidang Vishame Samopashtitam Anarya Jushtam Ashvargyam Akirti Karamarjuna The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. Purport Krishna and the Supreme Personality of Godhead are identical. Therefore, Lord Krishna is referred to as Bhagavan throughout the Gita. Bhagavan is the ultimate in the Absolute Truth. The Absolute Truth is realized in three phases of understanding, namely Brahman, or the impersonal, all-pervasive spirit, Paramatma, or the localized aspect of the Supreme within the heart of all living entities, and Bhagavan, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 11, this conception of the Absolute Truth is explained thus Vedanti tat tat bavidas tat vam yaj gyanamadvayam brahmiti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabhyate. 
The absolute truth is realized in three phases of understanding by the knower of the absolute truth, and all of them are identical. Such phases of the absolute truth are expressed as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. These three divine aspects can be explained by the example of the sun, which also has three different aspects, namely the sunshine, the sun's surface, and the sun planet itself. One who studies the sunshine only is the preliminary student. One who understands the sun's surface is further advanced, and one who can enter into the sun planet is the highest. Ordinary students who are satisfied by simply understanding the sunshine, its universal pervasiveness and the glaring effulgence of its impersonal nature may be compared to those who can realize only the Brahman feature of the Absolute Truth. The student who is advanced still further can know the sun disk which is compared to knowledge of the Paramatma feature of the Absolute Truth. And the student who can enter into the heart of the Sun Planet is compared to those who realize the personal features of the Supreme Absolute Truth. Therefore, the Bhaktas or the Transcendentalists who have realized the Bhagavan feature of the Absolute Truth are the topmost Transcendentalists. Although all students who are engaged in the study of the Absolute Truth are engaged in the same subject matter. The sunshine, the sun disk, and the inner affairs of the sun planet cannot be separated from one another. And yet the students of the three different phases are not in the same category. The Sanskrit word Bhagavan <clears throat> is explained by the great authority Parashara Muni, the father of Vyasadeva, the Supreme Personality who possesses all riches, all strength, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge and all renunciation is called Bhagavan. There are many persons who are very rich, very powerful, very beautiful, very famous, very learned, and very much detached. But no one can claim that he possesses all riches, all strength, etc. entirely. Only Krishna can claim this because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No living entity, including Brahma, Lord Shiva or Narayana, can possess opulences as fully as Krishna. Therefore, it is concluded in the Brahma Sangita by Lord Brahma himself that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one is equal to or above him. He is the primeval Lord or Bhagavan known as Govinda and he is the Supreme Cause of all causes. Ishvadat Parama Krishna Sachid Ananda Bigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. There are many personalities possessing the qualities of Bhagavan, but Krishna is the Supreme because none can excel him. He is the Supreme Person, and his body is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. He is the primeval Lord Govinda and the cause of all causes. Brahma Sangita 5.1 In the Bhagavatam also, there is a list of many incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Krishna is described as the original Personality of Godhead from whom many, many incarnations and personalities of Godhead expand. Etechang Chakalak Pungsa Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam Indrari Vyakulam Lokam Mridayanti Yuge Yuge 
all the lists of the incarnations of Godhead submitted herewith are either plenary expansions or parts of the plenary expansions of the Supreme Godhead. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Bhagavatam 1.3.28 Therefore, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, the source of both the Super Soul and the impersonal Brahman. In the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arjuna's lamentation for his kinsmen is certainly unbecoming, and therefore Krishna expressed his surprise with the word kuta, where from. Such impurities were never expected from a person belonging to the civilized class of men known as Aryans. The word Aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a, civ and have a civilization based on spiritual realization. Persons who are led by the material conception of life do not know that the aim of life is realization of the absolute truth, Vishnu or Bhagavan, and they are captivated by the external features of the material world, and therefore they do not know what liberation is. Persons who have no knowledge of liberation from material bondage are called non-Aryans. Although Arjuna was a Kshatriya, he was deviating from his prescribed duties by declining to fight. This act of cowardice is described as befitting the non-Aryans. Such de deviation from duty does not help one in the progress of spiritual life, nor does it even give one the opportunity to become famous in this world. Lord Krishna did not approve of the so-called compassion of Arjuna for his kinsmen. Text 3 Lai byang ma smagama parta naita twai upapadjate chudram ridaya dorbalyam tuk tutishta param tapa. O son of Prita, do not yield to this degrading impotence. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Purport Arjuna was addressed as the son of Prita, who happened to, have, who happened to be the sister of Krishna's father, Vasudev. Therefore, Arjuna had a blood relationship with Krishna. If the son of a Kshatriya declines to fight, he is a Kshatriya in name only, and if the son of a brahmana acts impiously, he is a brahmana in name only. Such chatriyas and brahmanas are unworthy sons of their fathers. Therefore, Krishna did not want Arjuna to become an unworthy son of a chatriya. Arjuna was the most intimate friend of Krishna, and Krishna was directly guiding him on the chariot. But in spite of all these credits, if Arjuna abandoned the battle, he would be committing an infamous act. Therefore, Krishna said that such an attitude in Arjuna did not fit his personality. Arjuna might argue that he would give up the battle on the grounds of his magnanimous attitude for the most respectable, Bhishma, and his relatives. But Krishna considered that sort of magnanimity mere weakness of heart. Such false magnanimity was not approved by any authority. Therefore, the magnanimity or so-called non-violence should be given up by, by persons like Arjuna under the direct guidance of Krishna. 
text 4. Arjuna Uvacha Katang Bhishma Mahang Sankhe Dronang Cha Madhusudana Ishubik Pratyutsa Pratyotsa Mi Ishubik Pratyotsa Mi Pujar Hau Arisudana Arjuna said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counteract with arrows in battle? men like Bhishma and Drona, who are worthy of my worship. PURPORT Respectable superiors like Bhishma, the grandfather, and Dronacharya, the teacher, are always worshipable. Even if they attack, they should not be counter-attacked. It is general etiquette that superiors are not to be offered even a verbal fight. Even if they are sometimes harsh in behavior, they should not be harshly treated. Then how is it possible for Arjuna to counteract them, to counterattack them? Would Krishna ever attack his own grandfather, Ugrasena, or his teacher, Sandipani Muni? These were some of the arguments offered by Arjuna to Krishna. Text 5 Guru Nahat Vahimahanu Bhavan Shreyo Bhoktum Vaikshum Api Haloke Advarta Kamangs Tuguru Nihaiva Bunji Yabogan Rudira Pradigdan It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. Purport According to scriptural codes, a teacher who engages in an, ab in an abominable action and has lost his sense of discrimination is fit to be abandoned. Bhishma and Drona were obliged to take the side of Duryodhana because of his financial assistance, although they should not have accepted such a position simply on financial considerations. Under the circumstances, they have lost the respectability of teachers. But Arjuna thinks that none, nevertheless, they remain his superiors and therefore to enjoy material profits after killing them would, would mean to enjoy spoils tainted with blood. Text 6 Nachai tad vidma kadaran no gariyo yadva yajema yadiva no yajeyohu yan eva hatva najaji shivamas tevastitak pramukhe darta rastraha Nor, nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live, yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. PURPORT Arjuna did not know whether he should fight and risk unnecessary violence, although fighting is the duty of, a chatria, of the Chatriyas, or whether he should refrain and live by begging. If he did not conquer the enemy, begging would be his only means of subsistence. Nor was there certainty of victory, because either side might emerge victorious. Even if victory awaited them and their cause was justified, still, if the sons of Dhritarashtra died in battle, it would be very difficult to live in their absence. Under the circumstances, that would be another kind of defeat for them. All these considerations by Arjuna definitely proved that not only was he a great devotee of the Lord, but he was also highly enlightened and had complete control over his mind and senses. His desire to live by begging 
although he was born in the royal household, is another sign of detachment. He was truly virtuous, as these qualities, combined with his faith in the words of instruction of Sri Krishna, his, spir his spiritual master, indicate, indicate, oh, my glasses, it looked like a period, but a comma, but it's a period. He was truly virtuous, as these qualities, combined with his faith in the words of instruction of Krishna, his spiritual master, indicate. It is concluded that Arjuna was quite fit for liberation. Unless the senses are controlled, there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge. And without knowledge and devotion, there is no chance of liberation. Arjuna was competent in all these attributes, over and above his enormous attributes in his material relationships. Text 7 Karpanyago dosho pahatas sobhava Prichchami twam dharmasamuda chetaha Yachchayaksyan nichchitam bruhitan me Shishas teham shadimam twam prabhanam Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Purport By nature's own way, the complete system of material activities is a source of perplexity for everyone. In every step there is perplexity and therefore it behooves one to approach a bona fide spiritual master who can give one proper guidance for executing the purpose of life. All Vedic literatures advise us to approach a bona fide spiritual master to get free from the perplexities of life, which happen without, without our desire. They are like a forest fire that somehow blazes without being set by anyone. Similarly, the world situation is such that perplexities of life automatically appear without our wanting such confusion. No one wants fire, and yet it takes place and we become perplexed. The Vedic wisdom therefore advises that in order to solve the perplexities of life <clears throat> and to understand the science of the solution, one must approach a spiritual master who is in the disciplic succession. A person with a bona fide spiritual master is supposed to know everything. One should not, therefore, remain in material perplexities but should approach a spiritual master. This is the purport of this verse. Who is the man in material perplexities? It is he who does not understand the problems of life. In the Brihat Aranyaka Upanishad 3.8.10, the perplexed man is described as follows, Yo va etad akshadam gargi avitivasmal Advit Vasmal Lokat Praitisakripana. He is a miserly man who does not solve the problems of life as a human and who thus quits this world like the cats and dogs without understanding the science of self realization. This human form of life is a most valuable asset for the living entity who can utilize it for solving the problems of life. Therefore, one who does not utilize this opportunity properly is a miser. On the other hand, there is the brahmana, or he who is intelligent enough to utilize this body to solve all the problems of life. Yaitad akshadam gargi 
vidit vasmal lokat praiti sabramanaha. The creepanas, or miserly persons, waste their time in being overly affectionate for family, society, country, etc., in the material conception of life. One is, one is often attached to family life, namely to wife, children, and other members on the basis of skin disease. The Kripana thinks that he is able to protect his family members from death, or the Kripana thinks that his family or society can save him from the verge of death. Such family attachment can be found even in the lower animals who take care of children also. Being intelligent, Arjuna could understand that his affection for family members and his wish to protect them from death were the causes of his perplexities. Although he could understand that his duty to fight was awaiting him, still, on account of miserly weakness, he could not discharge the duties. He is de therefore asking Lord Krishna, the Supreme Spiritual Master, to make a definite solution. He offers himself to Krishna as a disciple. He wants to stop friendly talks. Talks between the Master and the disciple are serious. And now Arjuna wants to talk very seriously before the recognized Spiritual Master. Krishna is therefore the original spiritual master of the science of Bhagavad Gita and Arjuna is the first disciple for understanding the Gita. How Arjuna understands the Bhagavad Gita is stated in the Gita itself. And yet foolish, mundane scholars explain that one need not submit to Krishna as a person but to the unborn Krishna within the unborn within Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna's within and without, and one who has no sense of this understanding is the greatest fool in trying to understand Bhagavad Gita. Text 8 Nahi prapasyami mamad <clears throat> Nahi prapasyami mamapanudyad Yachchokam uchchoshinam indriyanam Avapya bomao asapatramidam Rajam suranam apichadi patyam I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous, unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like that of the demigods in heaven. Purport. <clears throat> Although Arjuna was putting forward so many arguments based on knowledge of the principles of religion and moral codes, it appears that he was unable to solve his real problem without the help of the spiritual master, Lord Sri Krishna. He could understand that his so-called knowledge was useless in driving away his problems, which were drying up his whole existence, and it was impossible for him to solve such perplexities without the help of a spiritual master like Lord Krishna. Academic knowledge scholarship, high position, etc. are all useless in solving the problems of life. Help can be given only by a spiritual master like Krishna. Therefore, the conclusion is that a spiritual master who is 100% Krishna conscious is the bona fide spiritual master for he can solve the problems of life. Lord Chaitanya said that one who is master in the science of Krishna consciousness, regardless of his social position, is the real spiritual master. 
खीबा भी प्र खीबा न्यासी शुद्ध खेणी नोय ये कृष्ण तत्व वेद से गुरु होय इट डज नॉट मैटर वेदर ए पर्सन इज ए विप्र लर्न इट स्कॉलर इन वेदिक विजडम और इज बोर्न इन ए लोअर फैमिली और इज इन रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ इफ ही इज ए मैस्टर इन द साइंस ऑफ कृष्णा ही इज द परफेक्ट एंड बोनाफाइड स्पिरिचुअल मैस्टर Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 8128 So without being a master in the science of Krishna consciousness no one is a bona fide spiritual master It is also said in the Vedic literature Shat karma vipuno vipro mantra tantra vishadada avaishnavo guru nasyat vaishnavak shapacho guru hu a scholarly brahmana expert in all subjects of vedic knowledge is unfit to become a spiritual master without being a vaishnava or expert in the science of krishna consciousness but a person born in a family of lower lower caste can become a spiritual master if he is a vaishnava or krishna conscious padma purana the problem problems of material existence birth old age disease and death cannot be counteracted by accumulation of wealth and economic development in many parts of the world there are states which are replete with all facilities of life which are full of wealth and economically developed yet the problems of material existence are still present they are seeking peace in different ways but they can achieve real real happiness only if they consult krishna or the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam which constitute the science of krishna through the bona fide representative of krishna the man in krishna consciousness if economic development and material comforts could drive away one's lamentations for family social national or international inebriates then arjuna would arjuna would not have said that even an unrivaled kingdom on earth or supremacy like that of the demigods and the heavenly plant planets would be unable to drive away his lamentations he sought therefore refuge in krishna consciousness and that is the right path for peace and harmony economic development or supremacy over the world can be finished at any moment by the cataclysms of material nature even elevation into a higher planetary situation as men are now seeking on the moon planet can also be finished at one stroke The Bhagavad Gita confirms this. Chine punye marcha lokam vishanti. When the results of pious activities are finished, one falls down again from the peak of happiness to the lowest status of life. Many politicians of the world have fallen down in that way. Such downfalls only constitute more causes for lamentation. Therefore if we want to curb lamentation for good then we have to take shelter of Krishna as Arjuna is seeking to do so Arjuna asked Krishna to solve his problem definitely and that is the way of Krishna consciousness okay that's 8 o'clock and we will stop here our reading it's a stopping place now krishna is going to speak hare krishna bhagavad gita as it is ki jai these are the basics of krishna consciousness uh and the deeper <coughs> we solidify and fix 
the basics in our consciousness, <clears throat> uh, the higher we can build our house of bhakti. Hare Krishna. So if there's any reflections, discussions from the assembled sages, please be our guest. Hare Krishna. First up is something from Bhakta Matsu. Hare Krishna Bhakta Matsu. He says, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to your most revered spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Maharaj, in completing our chad every day and our personal sadhana, the question has arose of what is an ideal object of our daily meditation. For example, some devotees say just to read the translations, and still others say just chant the Sanskrit. Oftentimes also in the morning program we just chant the Bengali or Sanskrit without reading the translations. When chanting bhajans and studying Shastra, what is the proper mood and method? depends on the time and circumstance. It depends on the consciousness of those involved. Uh, there's, no, no, there's no fault in just sa- chanting the Sanskrit or just chanting the English or chanting both. There's no fault. The point is to understand what is being said. This is a r- kind of ritualistic conception, whether we should chant this or whether we should chant that. But the, the essence is to understand what's being said, to inquire after we've read. It's very important to read the, the, uh, the, the purports, very important, because we won't be able to put uh, the subject matter into proper perspective without Srila Prabhupada's purports. What we do here in doing our chad, we read the Sanskrit and the English uh, of the verses of a chapter every day, and then we st- pause, and if there's something that came out, just like we're doing now, we reflect, and then we uh, we, we uh, choose a verse, and then and read the purport. So in that way, every 18 days we read the whole Gita, or the verses, and we kind of spot, not spot, but we hear various purports, and various purports come out, and every 18 days, we get a, a good overview of the Gita. When something is clear, it doesn't need interpretation. When something isn't clear, then there's interpretation or ex- explanation needed. But if we keep reading, again and again, the Gita, as Srila Prabhupada instructed us, then the, his purports will gradually uh, be understood deeper and deeper. There's, there's many layers of understanding uh, in Prabhupada's purports. And anybody who just reads the Gita purports and think that their, their duty is done, I think it's a little shallow uh, way of doing things. We should hear them again and again and discuss them among one another. We also have some discussions at the end of our chad, just like we have these reflections. I'm, I'm actually, in these daily readings, I'm uh, imitating or uh, replicating the, 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 what's the word, the uh, format that we used in our uh, Kartik v- v- vows, our Vrat in Kartik, for, except for last year and this year also, it will be two years in a row. Vaisheshika Prabhu are not doing this, but for 19 years, every year before that, we would read five hours a day uh, Prabhupada's books and have reflections. So this is this is the way, Satam uh, Prasangam Mamavirya Sambido. 
we hear and we explain, we hear and explain, we hear and inquire, and hear and explain, and gradually uh, we assimilate. This is the process of assimilation. It's not academic, it's not speculative, it's hearing the truth uh, again and again until our intelligence becomes purified by that hearing and we can understand deeply and then apply it into our uh, consciousness, into our mental activities and finally into our uh, physical activities then we can become fixed in Krishna consciousness, Hare Krishna. And from Sadani Sachi Sundari. Hare Krishna, Hare Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Shriva Gurudev. And from Yadutama. Haribo Yudutama, Haribo. He says, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. From Gopakanya Devi Dasi. She says, Hare Krishna dear Maharaj and all friends, all glories to Sri the <laughs> Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. And Jai Maharaj. This is from Thomas Haribo. Haribo Thomas. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for this service. Please forgive my ignorance of Mahabharat. But did any of Arjuna's arguments against fighting actually come true? Uh, women polluted, unwanted population, widespread irreligion, and so on? Yes. It all came true. But that's because Krishna uh, is in control of everything. It was Krishna who wanted the battle of Kukshetra to happen. He wanted to clean the uh, demoniac uh, rulers who were exploiting the citizens uh, and, and, and curtailing religion. So it's Krishna who is time and it's Krishna who is indirectly through the material energy causing the uh, Kali Yuga to progress or digress. So that's part of Krishna's plan because as the Kali Yuga uh, the, the activities of the human society become degraded uh, everything becomes complicated everything becomes more uh, degraded and therefore uh, the, method, the methods of teaching uh, change over time uh, from high philosophical understanding to uh, bribery you know and to buy and, and then eventually the stick so the Kali Yuga has to go on and it has to degrade eventually so that the people who become so animalistic that they can't uh, listen anymore, all they can respond to is the stick. Uh, all these things are necessary. But Krishna, don't get, me, don't get me wrong, when he Krishna comes, he delivers everyone in the whole universe. Lord Chaitanya comes, he delivers everyone in the whole universe and instantaneously the souls who are waiting to become active they fill up the universe again instantaneously this is Krishna this is God he can do these things and with full faith in Krishna uh, then one can actually become fixed in following the laws of nature and remove oneself from this material entanglement Hare Krishna next is something from Goranga Gopal Haribo Goranga Gopal 
He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for this nice reading. Krishna says in verse 2 3 that this degrading impotence does not become you. Too often my mind is instructing me something totally speculated and obviously independent from Krishna's direct guidance. I then identify so much with these thoughts that I become weak and impotent in bhakti, which then leads into much more troubles down, down the road if I don't decide to keep the mind in check. I really can find shelter in this instruction from Krishna that I understand to remind me that I shouldn't identify with my mind and that taking shelter of his words is the only way to become strong in spiritual life. Is that a good understanding of this verse or am I speculating on its meaning? No, it's a good understanding and it's a nice reflection. Thank you very much. Also, how do we understand what is said in the purport to verse 6 where Prabhupada explains that Arjuna had complete control over his mind and senses? It seems that his mind was giving him grief at the, at the time though. In what context is Prabhupada stating that? Would you, could, you, could you quote it? Quote it again? This is Prabhupada's, from Prabhupada's purport. He says, where Prabhupada explains that Arjuna had complete control over his mind and senses. Uh, I'd have to give, give me the book, because you're giving me a sentence, and you, in order to understand a sentence, you have to understand it in context. And so far, I can't understand it in context. What was it, two and three? Yeah, all these considerations by Arjuna definitely proved that not only was he a great devotee of the Lord, but that he was also highly enlightened and had complete control over his mind and senses. So what this means is that he's thoughtful. This is what Prabhupada is saying, that he ha he's he's. He's in control of his mind and senses to the point where even though he's, he's distressed and even though he is uh, trying to find reasons for avoiding you know, his duty, still he's thoughtful about it. And there, that's showing that he actually has control of his mind and senses. He's able to analyze the situation. That means he's in, in control of his mind and senses. So we have to be careful not to take a sentence or a part of a sentence out of context. We have to understand each sentence in context with the, with the sentences around it and each verse with the verses around it. And that way we can get a fuller understanding more complete understanding of what's happening. Hare Krishna. Next is from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Anandamurti. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Today I found that taking shelter of the right Guru and Lord Krishna is our life and soul so important. Otherwise there are problems everywhere, every time, every step. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank y you so yes, much. Yes, that is the nature of material world as is explained by Prabhupada in the purports to today's reading. There are perplexities in the material world, always. This, this 
uh, Bhagavad Gita was, uh, the purport was written how many years ago? A long time ago, you know, uh, 40, 50 years ago. And th the same perplexities are there now, and they're getting worse. That's the nature of the material world. So we, we, sh we, we shouldn't try to solve the perplexities of the material world by material solutions, by the strength of our own creativity, because we are so insignificant and weak compared to the force of the material nature. Hare Krishna. Next is from Yadutama. Hare Krishna Yadutama. He says, Dear Guru Dev, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Prabhupada. At the end of the first verse, Prabhupada writes, quote, This realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self. Unquote. Could you please go a little deeper about what Prabhupada means by this statement? Where is it? End of the first verse. End of the first verse. Mm. I have to look this up because it may have been a edit. First verse of the second chapter. Is it? Yes. First verse of the second chapter. In the purport. There's a little bit more to that question also. Uh, well, let's do one, one thing at a time. Okay, here we go. This chapter instructs us in self-realization by an analytical study of the material body and the spirit soul, spirit soul as explained by the Supreme Authority Lord Sri Krishna. This realization is possible when one works without attachment to furtive results and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self. Means, unless you know that you're not your body and have realized you're not your body, you cannot see things as they are. You cannot analyze yourself properly can't see properly. We see the reality through the eyes of knowledge and that begins with being fixed in the spiritual conception that we're not the body. It begins with be not being attached to the, to the fruits of our work. This is the beginning of spiritual life. Realization. We'll we'll hear more verses in this chapter later on, and we'll discuss this more. So here, Prabhupada says this chapter instructs us in self-realization by an analytical study of the material body and the spirit soul. That means, what is the difference between me and the material energy? If we don't, if we haven't realized that concept, we're still in the material concept. We need to see the world through spiritual concepts. It's our material concepts that keep us in the material world conditioned by the material uh, nature. So the f this is the first step in spiritual life. Without doing this, without actually realizing that we're not the body, that we're a spiritual being, 
and that that spiritual being is eternal and it's an eternal servant of Krishna we can't go a step forward in spiritual life that's what that statement means Hare Krishna from Bhakta Rupa Haribo Bhakta Rupa he says Hare Krishna Maharaj feel very lucky to have been found by Srila Prabhupada Mm. It's unbelievable how lucky we are. Mm. Absolutely true. And he took so much trouble to explain everything so clearly. Yes, we are eternally indebted. When there's no way we can repay Prabhupada for this gift of this knowledge. and the daily life of a spiritual personality how to act spiritually how to purify our minds and our senses it's, in, it's incredible and it's inconceivable Hare Krishna thank you next is from Daitari Haridas Haribo Daitari Haridas Vijay Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada and these daily readings. We see Arjuna taking full refuge of Krishna and submitting himself to his instructions with the realization that material happiness will not make him happy and that Krishna consciousness is the only solution. Only solution. This pure faith in Krishna is obviously very important to get the real benefit of his instructions. I was wondering about how do we develop full faith in our Diksha Guru to the extent that we make his instructions our life and soul. It seems like when Prabhupada was here he was the only clear authority and everything rested on his word but now we have many great souls on the planet highly advanced on the path and sold out to Prabhupada, but they often differ on certain details. So as neophytes, how do we get over these superficial differences and stay fixed on the orders of our Guru without well, being... You answered your own question already. It's a detailed... There are details in difference, but the principle is the same. If a person is not teaching you how to how to surrender to Krishna then he's not a guru <laughs> and, and, and as far as I know all the gurus in this movement are teaching that so the details are less important than the basic principle because everyone is a different person it's not that when you become perfect you you're like a, a cookie cut devotee and then you know every you always everyone has to move the same way and speak the same way and talk the same way and everything no it's not like that we're not clones of each other we're not even clones of our guru you know we're supposed to select the spiritual master that we have faith in you're saying how can I get faith in my spiritual master well you should have investigated first of all by learning the books yourself enough to be able to see whether he's speaking uh, Srila Prabhupada's uh, realizations or not. That's your responsibility. It's not that, I mean, Krishna never controls us in that way. He never interferes with our independent thoughtfulness. But it's up to us to use our independent thoughtfulness that's given to us by, by Krishna to make the right selections and do the right thing and re accept the th things that are favorable and reject the things that are unfavorable. But each person is different. You know, devotional service is such that not only it has to be within the realms of activity that are given to us by Shastra, but it also has to be like, like Arjuna. He's, he's a Chatriya, he's a warrior. You know, the whole world depends on the strength of his arms right now. And uh, he wants to give that up. So 
Krishna, who's acting as a spiritual master, you know, fires him up so that he can act according to his actual duty, according to the nature he's acquired. And, I mean, to answer the question, how do you develop full faith by following the orders of the spiritual master? You follow the orders of your spiritual master and then you will develop, gradually you'll develop full faith. But if you don't follow them or you change them and do, do something that doesn't want you to do, then you won't get that intelligence. Yasti Devi Purab Bhakti Yata Devi Tata Guru. One who has full faith in Krishna and a spiritual master, all the imports of knowledge be, become automatically revealed to such a person. So, first of all, understand how important it is that we do develop faith and then uh, follow the process. Uh, look back. Look back in time before you came to Krishna consciousness, what did you know? Completely bewildered, wandering around, doing this and that, whatever you felt like, with no idea who you were, no, no idea what was going on here. So you look back and see the difference and then extrapolate. If I keep doing what I've been doing since I met my spiritual master and Srila Prabhupada, and look into the future, then you'll see if you're following properly. So if you're not following properly, if you're doing one thing outside, saying one thing outside, and thinking a different thing, different thing inside, then you can't go forward. We'll learn about that in the third chapter, next chapter. Karmendriyani samyam ya ya aste manasas maran indriyaratan vimuratma mitya chara si uchite. So the first step is to be able to act and think on the same platform. Don't act one way and think another way. That's called then happen. What happens when you do that is you vimuratma, you become self deluded and then you become a pretender. You can't pretend because Krishna's in your heart. He knows every single thing you're doing and all your deepest, uh, you know, uh, attitudes and your motives. So that's the duty of the soul, to read the scriptures, to hear the orders of spiritual master and to adjust oneself. Every soul has that capacity. It's a matter of doing it. And along the way you may make mistakes and you may do so many things, but you have to stick with the process. Follow the regulative principles strictly. Chant your rounds strictly. Try to avoid offenses. And if you do that, you will get the strength. Serve without ulterior motive. That's what a pure devotee is. A person can be the simplest person just cleaning the temple room or doing some menial service. But if he has that faith, then he becomes elevated devotee, eligible for liberation, eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. There's something from Prashant Saraswat. Prashant Saraswat, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, what will be your suggestions for those who are doing mainly business in the name of Krishna Consciousness and are derailed from the philosophy that Prabhupada taught us? <laughs> what can be the best way to handle that situation? Give all your money to Krishna. Krishna explains in the Gita, in, in the 12th chapter, cultivate knowledge. 
Better than knowledge is contemplating the knowledge, sometimes called meditation. Better than that is to be detached from the fruits of your work. And then from that, you can work for Krishna. And for that, from that, you can follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga. And from that, you can develop attachment and attraction to Krishna. And you can fall in love with him and think only of Krishna. Do what you do only for Krishna. If you're working in an office and you give all of the fruits to Krishna, you're a sannyasi. So you're asking what you can do? Stop deviating. <laughs> That's the reason why the Bhagavad Gita is so important to understand and to assimilate. You have to understand what you're, what you're hearing from the Gita and then you have to practice it. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for those wonderful questions and wonderful reflections and wonderful discussion. I'm proud of Srila Prabhupada, I'm proud of all of you. Bhagavad Gita as it is, ki jai. Samabheda Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Prem Nandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic. Further instructions by, by Krishna to Arjuna. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.